Hey guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Land Rover channel, blah blah blah. Um, been a while since I did a video, but I have been doing some work on it. The Land Rover has been in the garage, I think you know that from the last video. It's been back out so I can get some painting done. We've got a load of brackets and stuff over there, I'll show you in a minute. And then um, it's just come back in now, literally half an hour ago. Uh, today's Sunday, Sunday the, was it the 12th? Yeah, day after that awful 9-11. Um, so yeah, so today we're going to just, just show you basically what I've done. Um, I also want to raise one little thing with you that you guys need to be aware of. Um, I feel that I have to tell people when things aren't good and I will tell people when things are really good. For instance, I always tell you about the fantastic service I get from Gwyn Lewis and his great products and everything. But I always, I'm always honest with you, like if, you know, if something should be stainless and it's not stainless, then... I'll, I'll tell you that I think it should be stainless and you know and that's that um, if you follow me on my modeling channel you'll know that I get given stuff um, I get stuff at discounted prices and if it's not good I will say it's not good I never say something's brilliant just because it's been given to me or given to me at a discount so um, that's the way I like to work so this last week not this last the week before sorry um, I ordered up some parts again so I'm forever needing the parts and on the bonnet cable here you can see this is the bonnet cable for the TDCI um, it's different than the other ones because it's got this cranked end on it and this cranked end this plastic piece here is very brittle and it snapped the end off so therefore it wouldn't stay in there so I looked around online and you can get these on eBay for like 40 or 60 quid or you know 30 pounds from some places but I saw an LR series they had it for like 10 pounds 50 with the VAT so I ordered one and just to make up the order, I ordered some other little bits and pieces as well that I didn't really need right now. But I just thought, you know, I, I hate paying postage for everything all the time. So I ordered it. And then about a week later, a parcel arrived. And in the box is all the other bits and pieces I ordered. And an invoice with this on it, a new cable on it and everything. Um, but no cable. So I emailed them and said, like, you know, you've, you've sent me this package but not put the cable in. So they refunded me for the cable and told me that it was no longer available and it had now changed part number and was now £30. So they took my money, they invoiced me, they put the invoice in the box, they sent the box without the item and then after I told them I don't have it, they refunded me and told me it's no longer available. So I've, got, I've gone absolutely mad with them and I've said, look, you know, for Christ's sake, tell your customers if you haven't got something in stock because if they'd have told me they didn't have the cable, I'd have cancelled the order because I don't need the other stuff right now that I've ordered. So, you know, so I've, I've paid all this postage for a load of crap I don't need and I haven't got a bonnet cable. So what I've done is fix this one. So basically the moral of the story is, is be careful when you're buying off LR series, make sure that what you're ordering is in stock. It, it said it was in stock on their website, so... You know, not, I won't be ordering from them again, not happy at all. So um, basically, I've repaired this one, and what I've done, you can see there, I've taken an 8mm large stainless washer, sawn a, a slot into it, as you can see there. You, can, you can't see there. <laughs> um, I've sawn a slot into it, so basically, there you go, you can see it there now. Sawn a slot into it so that it goes over, so we could put the cable put the cable into the into the slot in the bracket and then I've got two M3 screws threaded the um, the actual body so I've tapped the the steel part of the bracket and then put those screws in so it's a friction fit and then put a couple of lock nuts on the back as you can see there so that saved me 30 quid so um, but be careful if you've got a TDCI be careful with this cable this piece on the end is very brittle it doesn't it's not like a nylon -y plastic it's very hard and it just snaps so um, be very careful so we've got to fit that now so what we'll do is we'll get over to the Land Rover and I will show you what we've done we've also got the Brit part um, bulkhead bar back in but there's another issue <laughs> see you in a minute okay so as you can see here now we've got all the um all the wiring back in, we've got the bulkhead, bulkhead crash bar back in. That's all been repainted, that was all quite rusty. These brackets down here, by the way, these are the brackets that your dashboard screws to underneath. They weren't painted at all, so um, have a look at them, especially if you've got leaks from these window areas here, these window bolt areas, then um, have a look at all this because it's quite rusty on mine. And, and I didn't even have much of a leak, I had a very small leak here. Um, so yeah, so it's all in, as you can see, all the heaters in and everything, that was a nightmare getting that in. And then you've got all this in here with all these little plastic clips and everything. So it's worth having photographs and taking lots of pictures when you're, um, when you're doing this. Now I've actually, I think I've lost a box 
because there is a rubber that goes in the back of the um, wiper motor which I've lost and I've also lost this plate which is a shame <laughs> this aluminium plate rivets to the rivets to the bulkhead and then you can see the VIN number through the window and I've lost it um, I can't find it anywhere and I've also lost this this rubber that goes in behind here so I've just put a piece of foam rubber in there just to support the wiper motor but um, I found on eBay you can get these and you send them your VIN number and they will actually make you one. So I think that's what I'm going to have to do. At least that'll guarantee if I can find the other one, I'll find it the day I pay for it. So that's one thing. So as we can see, all the wire is in, all the breather hoses are in. Um, this is the hose for the um, for the um, the locker, the, At the Atlas, not the Atlas, the Ashcroft locking diff. That's the hose for that. That's been left extra long, so I don't know where the pump's going to go yet. I think it's going to go under the seat down here. Um, and I've got a, I've also got a breather in now for the fuel pipe. You can see this is a six mil, and it, it's got cable tied, and it goes in between these clamps here, so it fits really nicely. Um, so I've got an eight mil to six mil conversion, um, you know, a Festo um, push fit converter, because the breather pipe is eight mil. I've actually got the um, well, these hoses here. These are all painted and fitted in there. They're really expensive. Um, you've seen me do the steering column, but I've put the proper bolts in now. As you can see there, we've got the proper Torx bolts in there. Um, this hose here is now done. This is the proper one. It's an ISO. It's got an ISO number on it, um, and it's really good stuff. So uh, it's a little bit thicker, so it's a bit of a squeeze getting the tub down, but it does go down. So that's all fine. Um, I can't think of the ISO number. No, it's, not, it's on there. I think there you go. Seven eight four zero. ISO seven eight four zero. That's the hose to get apparently. Now I did get the brick part hose, which is in a box over there. And I put it in some diesel and that has been in diesel now for two weeks and it's not dissolved at all so maybe the Brit, hard, Brit, post, Brit part hose would have been okay although I was told it does split so I didn't want to take the chance because once you've got the body on getting into that tank is a bloody nightmare. Um, we talked about the master cylinder there so there's a nice new one on there now. I put some um, silicon sealant around that joint in there you can just see it which is where it leaks and gets all the paint off so that might help it a little bit I don't know we just have to keep an eye on it it's a crap design absolute shit so um there we go engine's looking all pretty and as you can see we've got all the wiring on the bulkhead as well I've been waiting forever for some um, silicon hoses from Ali Sport and I'm fed up with waiting now it's holding me up I've got to get on get this done I want to get all the hoses done before the wings go on because these TDC engines are a bit of a bitch to work on with the wings on because there's just no room and the coolant hose system is <laughs> again I get a bit fed up with that actually it's all these just sort of these workarounds to fit this engine into here I mean you've got the coolant tank goes over here yeah and the coolant tank feeds into the engine here so basically you've got a hose that comes all around the back of the engine why don't they just put the coolant tank here you know it's crazy so yeah that's pretty crap um and then you've got all the hoses for the uh, EGR cooler and everything as well. So basically, um, that's all going to be done. Everything's filled with oil now, except for the axles. I haven't put oil in the axles yet. Uh, but you can see it's all done here. And this is that lovely brick part bulkhead removal bar. Now, if you're new to my channel, this is dog's footprints. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, go back and look. This is the brick part removal bar. But this is my own version of it. I bought the bar and then I had to completely take it apart, redo all the welds and rejig re it and everything to make it fit. So the original holes that were here are now here. So where these bolts here go, those holes are now there. So I've had to move everything back. So it's um, it's bad. It's not very good at all. Um, and it's all it doesn't fit down here properly or anything so I've made it fit cut it all about had it powder coated so it's looking lovely and glossy and um, that cost me another 60 quid to have that done so pain in the arse um, along the back here we've got some stainless steel bolts now with stainless steel washers rather than the steel fixings so they won't rust they're looking all good the lights I polished up with some um, what's the chemical called I can't remember what it's called now but you can get a plastic polishing compound, and that's what I've used for that. So I've polished all the lights up, so they all look lovely and new. And the black on here, I've used a chemical, which I got from Amazon, which I can't remember the name of. And it's absolutely awesome, because it all looks brand new. Um, do, 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 what else? You can see under here, that's looking all lovely, and everything's all nice and shiny. Um, and that's about it. Do not press on the brake pedal, because I've got no brake pads in there. I don't want to push the pistons out. But all the brakes are all bled now. The clutch is all bled. 
everything's all done. Um, and over here we have the last, these are the last parts we've painted. So we've got a bracket there so it supports the wing. We've got this part of the um, slam panel. Got the main slam panel itself here. And then we've got some brackets here, the radiator supports on the sides. And this is a um, this is the, the latch for the bonnet. This is where the, the spring comes down into. And that is it. And this is the um, the bars that support the centre of the slam panel into the chassis. So basically we are done with the painting. Um, other than the roof, I've got to paint the roof. Oh, up here we've got some more bits up here. Look, got the uh, that's the um, that's the discovery drop arm for the uh, for the steering box. That's part of the Gwyn Lewis Sumo Bars kit, and I'll be showing you fitting that. This is the air filter support bracket. Okay, that's all done. And then we've got this is the power steering bracket there. So uh, yeah, it's all looking good. Um, I'm sorry there's not much video work on like how to do this, how to do that, because basically it's just bolting parts on. There's no there's no particular skill. Oh, one, one guy did ask me to show him the pipes. Um, this is the brake regulator valve. It's the same on a TD5, I believe. And he's asked me to show him how it's all plumbed. So you've got the, the main brake pipe going to the rear, which is connected here on the bulkhead, okay? So that pipe comes along. It's coming along here. It's coming under there, okay? It's coming along there, and it's going into the top there. So that's your main, that's your rear brake pipe feed. This one here is going to the front right brake. Okay, so this one here, front right brake. This one here, which is the outer underneath one, that's going to the bottom front of the of the um, of the master cylinder. And this one here is going round into the rear side of the master cylinder. And then this one here is going directly to the front left brake. Okay, so front left brake. That's going to the regulator. That's going to the regulator. Okay, so there you go. So you could just rewind and watch again and you'll learn. So um, there we go. So I'm going to get on with some more stuff now and uh, and I'll be back. I'll get that bonnet cable back in as well. So um, thanks for watching. I know it's been a quick one, but um, there's not really much I can show you to do. So as I say, it's just bought it all together. And um, I'm going to get some coolant hoses on there now. And maybe this, this week I hope to get it all started and have it running. So we shall see. Bye for now.